opera study was the pivotal phase three study uh, that led to the approval of ocrelizumab in the treatment of uh, relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Uh, these were actually two trials, two twin uh, trials, in which ocrelizumab was compared with interferon beta 1a in patients with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. And these were conducted uh, around 10 years ago. So, so recruitment started in uh, 2011, in the end of okay. 2011, and ended in the beginning of 2013. Uh, and these uh, trials recruited, uh, each one of them recruited a little bit more than 800 patients. Uh, and from this population of patients, we selected uh, those patients that had um, less than two years uh, of disease uh, after diagnosis, and that were also treatment naive. Uh, and we studied this population throughout time, not only during the two years of the double blind period, but also during the open label extension that went on. Uh, and we analyzed seven years of this open label extension. So in total, nine years of follow up of these patients. Uh, these opera trials, of course, were uh, in favor of, of ocrelizumab uh, as uh, being more advantageous, more efficacious um, than uh, interferon uh, in terms of you know suppression of relapses, suppression of, of new lesions, uh, either enhancing or uh, new T2 lesions. Um, they also um, showed a trend towards a benefit in terms of a slowing disability progression, although, uh, although it was not statistically significant. And um, what we did was to try to understand um, if these uh, you know, benefits of treatment with ocrelizumab would also apply to the population of very early and treatment naive patients, and if these benefits would extend in time. And of course, we are also interested in analyzing safety. In our study, in which we analyzed the subpopulation of patients of the OPERA trials that were treatment naive and had less than two years of disease diagnosis, uh, one of the most important findings is to see that uh, these patients, after nine years of continuous treatment with ocrelizumab, have a uh, probability of no evidence of disease activity of uh, around 50%. So half of the patients that were started from the, the beginning with ocrelizumab don't have any sign of disease activity for nine years. And this compares with uh, only 25% uh, uh, probability of achieving neither in those patients that did interferon in the first two years and then switched to ocrelizumab. So uh, I think this is one of the most striking uh, things. And it's important to say that we um, could follow up for nine years, uh, approximately two thirds of the patients that entered the trial. So it's a very high retention rate that is balanced between the two groups. And even so, we got these uh, very important results. Also very important is uh, the finding that um, there was a benefit of starting ocrelizumab early on in terms of disability progression. So the probability of having a disability progression event was reduced by starting earlier with ocrelizumab. And, and this was uh, evident after the two years, but even after those patients that started interferon switched to ocrelizumab, they never catch up with the others. So there's always a difference between the two groups, even after nine years, uh, even considering that those patients that started interferon were only doing that uh, for two years, for the first two years, and then switched. So uh, this shows that there is really an important gain to be obtained by starting ocrelizumab earlier. On the other side, we saw no significant uh, safety signal arising in this uh, extended follow-up that we hadn't seen in the first two years or in uh, other ocrelizumab uh, trials. So there is no new safety signal. And even after nine years, there, there doesn't appear to be an increase in the rate of infections or the rate of malignancies. And we uh, also analyzed those patients that had a drop in their IgG levels, uh, which were approximately 12% of the entire population only. And even in those patients, in the periods that they have uh, decreased IgG levels, 
Of course, we saw an increase in the rate of infections, but the number of, of serious infections and particularly the nature of them was not different from what we see in patients without this decrease in IgG levels. Does attesting uh, the safety of this approach?